It's your boy Blue with brushes and blades and today I want to show you this kit bashed Grey Knight from the new-ish librarian in Terminator armor. This is a four and a half hour video cut down into 12 minutes, 13 minutes for your viewing pleasure. Um, basically going over every single process. I recorded the whole thing in the intent of actually doing this so that I'm not talking over the actual video. So this is current, not past being recorded blue. Um, here I'm just cleaning up mold lines off of everything, just getting everything nice and clean, going over every part of this gray sandpaper you see me using over and over again is actually 3000 grit sandpaper basically will make any surface just baby baby fine smooth i love this stuff i use it all the time especially when i'm kit bashing almost probably use it on every model just to get nice flat smooth areas uh here i've decided i want to use the actual terminator from gray knight's terminator bolt gun so i chopped it off getting it every, that cleaned up there we go getting the uh old all cleaned up getting the iron off off of the weapon i plan on using because i'm gonna put something else on there and just getting all the mold line cleaned up off of that getting this hand seems to still clean up mold lines and snip points and stuff like that here there's that 3000 grid sandpaper again uh, and you see here i have four pauldrons out two that came with the kit and two from the terminator and there's some big plans for that later. I'm sorry, a lot of this stuff ends up getting towards the bottom and a lot of it's off camera. Um, here I'm drilling out the back hole of the head to kind of get the helmet that I want to fit in there a little bit better. Just making sure cleaning up the cuts that I'm making. I actually end up regretting making that hole that big because I didn't need to push it back that far, but you can't see it from what I did. I probably put on the head i ripped it off probably three or four times but getting it on after the hood was actually a huge huge pain i thought i was good oh i'm making that hole a little bit bigger i th I, th I really thought that i needed to push it back further to make it look good and then i put it on and it was too far back and like i said i ended up ripping it off a couple times there I'm trying to glue it in the place through that hole that I created and it really just fought me. Um, I was letting that, touching that up, letting that dry, started working on the shoulders and the weapon. I put the original weapon on with the intent of cutting it off eventually. I'm probably looking up the weapon stats. Yep. I want to put this pole arm on that has like all these extra, I don't know if he's off of it. So I chop off, start chopping away, kind of measuring it based off of the actual length. So I want to keep the halibut length, but I want to use the handle that came with this librarian. So I'm actually pin drilling and then I use a little bit of super glue to create a good solid connection. I actually do this on a lot of my models. Um, even if not need it, if it if I can't support it in some way, I generally will drill it in any weak point to keep it from breaking. And I kind of snapped off the little tassels there and uh, got them off. Use the rest of the halibut to actually finish off the length to make it match. I keep comparing it to another one that I have sitting on standby. And I also it should be here in a second. End up clipping off the very oh there i'm cleaning up the rest of that shaft there pin drilling that getting it ready again sorry keep coming off the camera a little bit i need to adjust my camera location and that's my like 300 grit sandpaper end up actually chopping off um like the little skull it's at a lot of the bottom of a lot of our weapons for gray knights and putting it on there too i think i've already done that at this point looks like it yep all right, and then let's see where we're at now. Now we're really trying to get that chest piece back on there. 
and it just keeps fighting me. I keep pushing and moving the head. I probably should have just let it sit overnight, but I didn't. I just kept trying to fight with it and keep scraping it off here. Yep, there it is. I took it off again, scraping off all the unset plastic that's been melted. I start cleaning up some other lines while I'm kind of thinking about what I want to do. And then I go to want to put this uh, bolt gun on and I'm like, you know, I really need to get the shoulder pad in place first because it's going to be in the way. And I don't want to put it on and take it off and... And then I'm kind of comparing the new shoulder pad versus the old shoulder pad. The the new shoulder pad is a lot more round and like the old Grey Knights shoulder pads are really like this odd shape. I didn't realize that until I did this and it really did. It was awkward, but I had a plan for it. I was just kind of comparing it. Decided to get it on the, the base to just it was getting a little big and wobbly at this point. There we go. I start chopping off and nah, I'm not going to use the saw. Start chopping away at the shoulder pad to keep the ruins that are on the shoulder pads. Chop off that same part on the Grey Knight shoulder pad and bam, glue that bad boy on there. Um, I was actually shocked by how well that worked out. Uh, did the same thing again with the other one. And then, so we have two pauldrons that still have the runes on them from the new Terminator, but having the Grey Knight shoulder pad look. I can't wait to paint this guy. But I, like I said, again, in the beginning of the video, I just really wanted to show the process that I go through when I do some of my more elaborate kit bashes. Here I was trying to keep the agronophy in the middle of the axe and I end up just totally screwing it up. And so after all that trash, but it's all good. All right, now I'm working on the shoulder pad. You fix it, clean it up a little bit. Here I got my Timia thick. So that's basically my uh, gap filler that I use for a lot of stuff that doesn't need to be pretty. Um, comparison to some other dongles to see what I want to put on him still trying to fight with his head at this point this like hood portion was just kicking my butt it did not want to accept this gray knight helmet that I chose um and it just kept fighting me and here we go I ripped it off again <laughs> scraping away again it keeps getting lower and lower and lower but it actually worked, ended up working out in the end. I actually just needed to scrape off a bunch of it. There we go. We're going to try to set it again. And I pulled it out way more. And I'm just trying to get it in there just right. Trying to get it wherever it's touching. Try to get some extra security on that. Clean up the pauldrons a little bit more. Trying to figure out where I want to put them. Clean it up so it's the odd shape can fit the new shape. And again, sorry, some of it's off camera. Yes, I have already made that before when I ordered the model. Because of this model, I do plan on actually having him have lightning shooting out of his hand. Not 100% on it, but it was just like a little test run. I'm probably going to do it when it gets to the painting phase. Just cleaning up any weirdness, hitting up some extra connection points with my Tamiya glue. Again, the helmet is just kicking my butt. And I've done too much destruction to give up, so I had to get it to work. And I really wanted that, the rounded helmet. So we got our shoulder pads are both on now. And I'm working on chopping some bits, comparing it to the one that was on the model. And I really still, it was a little too big. I end up chopping the back end of it off. But I got it on there. Um, I don't think it's in this video, but I end up actually putting on a, a butt from a different weapon just to get for it wasn't boring and flat in the back. Uh, I really, really wanted to put that tilt shield on. 
Uh, I, I probably do that two or three times throughout this video too, but I end up not. I really, really love this straw stick. I use it a lot and get to sand down. It's really great for mold lines and getting surfaces nice and flat and smooth. Just comparing it some more to other models, other actual Terminators. I can't tell what I'm chopping away here. What am I chopping away here? Oh, I have completely chopped off a Terminator arm from a kid bash of my uh, Dreadnought. Um, so this is actually the like right thing that goes over the elbow and I'm like grinding it way down, cutting it down, trying to sand it down to get it nice and thin. Um, keep trying to debating it, cleaning it up, debating it, cleaning it up, debating it, cleaning it up. Say it's still too thick. So I get a metal file out, sand it down, polish it down, chop off the nub, sand down the nub. And then we get it in there. I was actually having a hard time with that too because of this little, the some other things were getting in the way, and I wasn't liking how high it was sitting in comparison to how the rest of them on Terminator sit. So I end up hitting it again and hit, making it a little bit of an angle, and then it got on there pretty well. Um, don't get too frustrated by the small things that I'm mentioning here. Um, cause we're only about three more minutes away with this video. And I do have a short, the same short that I used in my YouTube shorts, um, is at the end of this video. Um, so you'll get to see the finished product, do a nice little spinny spin. Um, you can always go and watch that short and here, just clean up some more mold lines, just some odd imperfections, anything that might've got nicked during its building process and stuff like that. What am I doing here? Uh, oh, I was really wanted to put on something to, and to fill that gap. There was just like a strange gap next to the book that I didn't like, and it was just really open. Um, so it was like a little bag and, and like a scroll. Um, I always pin my models. So now I'm trying to compare them to some bases I've already made to see if it can fit. It's actually really big for the four millimeter base. Um, so I'm going to probably end up making my own base for him. The base that you see there is a base that I just did in my last long form video, how to make awesome great night bases. Um, that's a really long video. That's the longest video I've ever done for Warhammer. So that was really cool, um, to do. It's actually been getting some love from you guys and I really appreciate it. There we go. This is the end product. I can't wait to paint them. Hopefully I'll be able to get some paint on them this week and at least primed up and some start coats. Uh, again, have a good one. Like, comment, and subscribe.